All right, so this lecture, we're going to uh, prove the Poincaré lemma. So we'll discuss like when does the closed form becomes exact. So closed implies exact for forms. So first, I'm going to throw you guys a definition of homo homotopic or homotopic, I don't know. So for both open sets and GH are two smooth, smooth mappings. And they're differentially homotopic if there exists an H such that is smooth. And we have these two. So H that transforms from G to H. We have, we have two curves. And H transform from G to H with respect to T. And as T ranges from 0 to 1. Okay. So now we have a Leibniz rule. We have a theorem, Leibniz rule. So here we like... Q is a rectangle and this is a continuous function, so we can write f as like this. Then this function fx defined to be this is continuous on Q. And also if the partial like the rows are the different the partial I mean the rows are continuous, then we have this equality. Okay? And this formula is called Leibniz rule for differentiating under integral sign. So we have these two formulas and we have to prove it. So so here's like the summary of what the lemma actually said. We have fx if f is continuous on q. So this function is continuous on q. And if this is continuous, then we have this equality. So we prove it. Let's prove it first. We know that q, this is a compact set, right? So we have f is uniformly continuous, which means that we'll have this when Right, so when we have x one minus x naught less than delta under soup metric, then we can conclude that f of x one minus f of x naught. And here we use the comparison property of uh, real integrals. Right. Well, this is less than or equal to epsilon of b minus a, because we have this, right? Which means that f is continuous, because we can scale epsilon arbitrarily small. Okay. So we have f is continuous. Done. First part, or we're done. So first one, we're done. Second part. Let's see. Because the only variables we are dealing with x a and j, x j and t, are the only variables, right? So we consider q. We can deal with this, and n is equal to one. So we'll add g x equals to this one f x t we deal with this and we want to show that this f prime x is equal to g x which will show and which will prove the theorem right but now for this g x right for this g x for this g x right we integrate with respect to the value x and here we use the Fubini theorem. We use the Fubini theorem. Right? Okay. So now because because this function is continuous, right? So we can use the Fubini theorem and this becomes And is equal to the fundamental theorem of algebra. No, fundamental theorem of calculus. <laughs> equal 
equals to and we again we use the definition right so we have this which means that c um x naught gx equals to f x naught minus f of c right and then we by fundamental theorem calculus again we have g equals to f prime right so we're done okay perfect and now we're gonna move on to a more complicated thing so we're gonna use it to prove point lemma and before that we're gonna use the differentiable homotopic after so f tilden says blah 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 smooth curves homotopic and we show that there exists a linear transformation that maps from k plus one form on b to k form on a so you're taking a form and you map to another form so we have these two formulas when the order is greater than zero or equal to zero so when the order is positive you have this formula and the word is zero you have this formula and we're going to verify them both okay So here's like the note, if Nita is a closed form, right, then we know they differ by an exact form, right? They differ by an exact form, right? So if f is a zero form, it's a closed zero form, then this is going to be zero, then this is going to equal to each other, right? So. Okay, so well, let's start to prove this theorem. Here are my like my rough works. I just move it like okay. Let me just let me just move it here maybe, and I'll just move it here for now. Okay, so thirty nine point two. The proof. Okay. So we're going to start with a special case. We start with a special case. So basically, we have A open and Rn. U is a neighborhood, right, of A times I and R M plus one, and we let alpha, beta be two mapping from A to U. We define them by alpha x equals to x naught, and beta x equals to x one. Then we can conclude that alpha and beta they are differentiable homotopic. Why? Because we first we notice that they are smooth, and we let H be the identity map. So they're homotopic. All right. So now we wanna we want. We start with special case. We want so that for any k plus one form, nita on u and a k form p nita on a such that so the this p is the it's not the it's not this p it's not this p. It's like the capital P. Right? We want to we want this formula. Plus nita plus P D nita. Beta star nita minus alpha star nita. If K is greater than zero. If K is greater than zero, 
if k is equal to zero, we want p of df is equal to this minus this. Okay? So this is what we want. We want to find some p such that it's gonna be equal like this. And we're gonna explain why later. Okay? So we let x we let so x be general points of Rn and T is real numbers. So we know that dx1, dxn, dt are elementary one forms, right? And we know them. And we define g be a function that is continuous. Alright, the maps from this set to R, this set to R. And we define define the function ig mm, ig a to r we define it by ig of x is equal to xt okay so it's going to equal to this and notice that this we're going to relate this to the Leibniz rule we just proved Okay, so we're gonna define, so now we define P. Define, we're gonna define P, we're gonna define T by what? So, for, Nita is a eight, n plus one form, right? So we can, it can be written like this. So i is a k plus 1 ascending tuple, and j is a k ascending tuple, okay? We can write it like this. All right. They're elementary, elementary forms, right? Alternating, they're elementary forms. So we define p nita. It's going to be defined equal to the sum of p f i d x i extends over all the settings and j and d x j d t and we have we defined to be like this were this one so the first component of this sum is equal to zero and G, J, D, X, J, D, T. This, we define it to be negative 1. So for K tuple, we have negative 1 to the K. And this is going to be uh, I of G, J. I, we define this. And D, X, J. So J is a setting to K tuple, right? So this will imply that this will imply that P of Nita is a K form, right? K form. On a, yeah. So we have a scalar function, right? And, oh, we have a sum of every scalar function times the elementary K form. So P and Nita has a K form on A. Now I'm going to verify them. We'll verify that P. Is linear. P is linear because the unique representation of so each each of the forms can be represented uniquely in this way. And from here, and we're gonna go down here, right? And from here, notice that this will be like a gj plus fj, right? And but but notice that i is also linear. Right, integrals are linear, right? Then we can split them. So we can split them again. So, so it eventually, we're done. So P is linear. <laughs> and we're gonna, okay, so 
for step two, second step. Let us mark um, th those two by formula star, okay? Yeah, star. And because we are assuming for a setting tuples, but we're going to show that this holds for any ij, for any tuple in k plus 1 tuple. And this is easy because if, if there's duplicates, we're done because zero it vanishes. Right? Otherwise, we arrange. Else, rearrange. We are rearrange them. Use like the, the wedge product thing. And they were gonna defer by a sign, right? Well, okay, so we're done. Right? And there's a special case that needs to be pointed out. There's a special case, so I will just write it here. So if Nita is a one form, then we have Nita is equal to right. And the J is empty, right? So we have P F Nita is gonna be equal to. 0 plus p of g d t well this is going to be equal to i g so if nita is a one form right then p nita gives the integration of the g of the scalar function this is some sense of an integration operator and we have studied differential operator right? this is a little special case that needs that's worth noting Okay, so we move on. We'll verify formula. Uh, set three. We're gonna verify. We're gonna verify. Okay, we're gonna verify those formula. Let's call them this. So this is what we want, right? We want those two formulas. So we're gonna verify this. Now, k equals zero, zero forms. Then p of df can write it as p of f x j d x j because p is linear, so we can write it like this. And each of f can be right like this, right? Because p is linear. And now, mm, this vanishes, right? So there's going to be zero plus. Um, I want to zero of, right? I of f t, right? So it's going to be equal to. Well, this is basically one, right? This is just one. Okay, but this is going to be equal to 0 to 1 t, right? Which is f of x1 minus f of x0. Well, this is f of beta minus f of alpha, because we define beta and alpha to be like this. And this, again, by definition, is like the linear pullback thing, right? We're done. So we have verified this one. We have done this one. Right? PDF is B star F minus F star F. Okay. K is equal to zero. It's a little special. No case. Move it there. Okay. Now we verify when K is greater than zero. When k is greater than zero, things get a bit complicated, but we can still handle it, okay? Now we're gonna, first we know that alpha x is equal to x zero, right? And this is a smooth function. 
so this of dxi this is going to be equal to d of alpha i we proved this by from our last lecture right and this is equal to dxi for what from n1 right because alpha i is equal to xi so they can be equal to each other and of dt is equal to d of alpha n plus one but alpha n plus one is a zero map so this is a zero map because the differential operator it's a linear transformation so it maps the zero vector to the zero vector in the vector space the corresponding vector space and the vector space we're talking about are forms and similar similarly for the function beta star and we know that dp this this linear right so we just consider f dx i and g of dx j dt right so first because there are these two cases so first we let nita equals to f of dx i okay so this is our first case so when nita is equal to f dx i the left hand side the left hand side is d of p nita plus p of d nita well p nita is equal to zero right d of zero because p nita is equal to do zero and plus p of d nita and what is d nita by the properties of wedge product is equal to p of d f d nita and plus f with d of d nita right of differentiable of differential operator we have this and this vanishes the last thing vanishes so we can just write it like this right okay oh sorry dxi i'm sorry dxi dxi okay and well this we write it out because the wedge product is linear so plus with a value t right Okay, well, because P is linear, right? So we can pull it out the P of this. P of this. Plus P of this. Oh my god, okay. P of this. Okay. <laughs> Now, because um, dx i. Okay, so my claim is that this will be, this will vanish because j, oh sorry, j, dx j, j. Okay, dx j. I'm sorry, so this j goes from 1 to n then this will vanish because i is a k plus 1 tuple from 1 to n so if there's duplicates it vanishes otherwise we can arrange it to an ascending order right if it's in ascending order but by the definition of p we define something like this so this is ascending k plus 1 order no, ascending k plus 1 tuple right and fi is a scalar function and know that this is also a scalar function so this will vanish entirely and for this one we use the anti-commutativity mm -hmm. of t so we switch we swap t and dxi and t will gonna be like due for like uh k plus one times 
right? So we used anti-commutativity, k plus 1 times. And then we remove, like, negative 1, k plus 1 outside, right? So we will get this is equal to 1 of p of Okay, now, what we have now here is that we again, for our definition of P, right, we have this thing. So this is a K double, so we have negative 1 to the K outside. Now, we have a K plus 1 tuple, so we're going to put the neck K plus 1 outside, so this will be two of them, right? So it's equal to 1, right? So it's going to be equal to i of ft with dxi by the definition. Well, this again, f of beta minus f of alpha, right? OK, let's just fix the left-hand side like this. And now we're going to look at the right-hand side. Right-hand side? is beta star nita minus alpha star nita it is equal to f of beta beta star dxi right minus alpha star dxi <laughs> all right because it preserves wedge product Right, this preserves wedge product. So, and this is f of beta minus f of alpha dxi. Right, the things on the red lines are the same, so they're equal to each other. Okay, so now with this, now, so two, first, second. When nita is equal to some g of dx j dt. Mm. So, so we do the left hand side first. So we're gonna call. Okay, let me just let me just write it out. So d of p nita is gonna be equal to d of. So this is nita. So p of this thing, well, which is basically k g i g d x j, right? Now this is gonna be equal to negative one. K is a linear, and times d j of this function. And dxj with dxj. Okay. This is the definition of how uh, we use the, the properties of differentiable uh, differential operator. <laughs> okay, and we calculate d nita. It's going to be equal to so d of nita. Here we used it. Uh, anti commutativity no, no, like just the properties of the differential differential operators it has right so differential operator under wedge product right there's like a long formula for right so this is going to be equal to you can verify it but I will write it out so this is going to be shift from 1 to n dJg dxj so this is dg right this is dg and dxj i'm oh, sorry which part with dxj and dxt and plus m plus one g dt dxj T right all 
Okay. No. The other, we have still a D, sorry. We have D of this and D of this, but this will vanish, right? D of D is going to be vanishing. So this, we look this as our DXJ in the definition of P, okay? In the definition of P. So which we're going to have the P of D neta. It's going to be equal to negative 1, k plus 1, right? Because k plus 1 tuple. This is the k plus 1 tuple, right? Sum of j, j, right? D, x, j, d, x, j, right? This is our d, x, j here, right? And this low j ranges from one end. And this term vanishes, so we don't we don't think about it. And so we add up these two, right? We add up those two. Okay, so observe that we add up those two. We're gonna have okay, so those are the same. This is just differ by negative one and they range from one to n good and notice that this and this they are equal to each other by a Leibniz rule Leibniz. we just proved it we just proved the did I spell it wrong it was lab lab nits rule okay i'm okay sorry i'm sorry Leibniz. so this is by Leibniz rule you can verify that on your own and they're equal to each other then we're done and the right hand side right hand side right hand side is equal to beta star of g d x j d t minus alpha star of g d x j d t okay and we know that b star because this preserves wedge product but d star of d t is zero and alpha star of d t is also equal to zero so we have zero minus zero which is equal to zero so this minus this is equal to this well this is what we want right this is what we want this plus this, I'm sorry. So they're equal to each other. Okay, we're good. Okay, so we have done a lot of things for the special case. But we haven't defined our P yet, right? And we're going to define it right now. So just bear with me. Set 5. Just set 5. Set 5. Set four, okay, sure. Set four, we define it in general case. General case, so we define P. A, right? So we have P of Nita is equal to this capital P of some H star nita. So what is H star? So first we have G H, right? C infinity map. H is the is the differentiable homotopy of of G and H. And alpha beta as before. And also P as before, then
So, H star nita. H, we know that H maps from A times, it has an interval to B, right? This is what H did. Then the start is a pullback that must maps from B, the space from B, the space of like the forms from B to forms on this. So if nita, if nita, so here's a nita, if nita is a k plus one form on B, then h star nita is a k plus one form on A, right? But this P increases the order by one, increase the order of the form by one, right? Did I, okay, I didn't write the domain and the range of the codomain of the P, but it doesn't matter. So, right, it increases the form by one, by order of one. Wait, no, it decreases by one. Oh, I'm sorry. It decreases the form by one, decreased by one. Increasing is the differential, differential operator increases the form, the order of the form by one, but this P decreases the order of the form. So, A plus is a K plus one form on what, some A times this, right? So, and P of H star N is then a K form on A, right? This is what we define. But notice that H of alpha is equal to G, H of beta is equal to H. By the definition. So for k positive, you have dp nita plus p d nita is going to be equal to d of p of h star nita mm, p of h star of d nita right so we back to the step like back to the case before the special case now then we have d of p of so this remains the same but this second term is going to go to p of d of h star nita because h star uh, it preserves the differential operator right now well, this is exactly by the, we define by the properties, it's going to be equal to beta star of h star nita minus alpha star h star nita. So dp of form and pd of the form is going to be equal to this, right? It was a b, b star of the form minus a star of the form. This is here. Uh, right, beta of the form minus alpha of the form of dp form and pd of the form. Okay. So here is what we got. Now, this is equal to h of beta star nita minus h of alpha star nita, right? What is h of beta? g and h. Sorry. h and g. Minus. Sorry, nita. So we're done. For the zero form, is easy, so I just skip it. Right? So we finish this theorem. Okay, but we have to move on. We haven't proved the lemma yet. So we're going to define what is a star convex set. A is a star convex set with respect to a point of A if for any set in A, the line segment adjoining them lies in A. So here's a, here's like an example. So A is star convex with respect to P, but not with Q, because Q, if you have this point, 
Okay, at this point, this portion does not lie in the graph. That lines the set. And B is star, con star convex with respect to all the points. And C is not star convex with respect to all points. So if, if this point, right, for this point, it does not line the portion. For this point, this part does not line the portion. For this point, this point doesn't line the portion. So anyways, the lemma says that if A is star convex, then then this co the converse tr is true. Close implies exact. All right, so this is like uh, theorem. 39.3 All right. So finally, I have to prove this. And because so we my my eyes are itchy. So P A and star convex convex and we let h be the identity map map and g be the constant map so that it sends x to p okay now then h and g they are differentiably homotopic homotopic English pronouns. I pronounce them. Homotopic. Homotopic. Okay, sure. Homotopic. If they're homotopic, <laughs> they are. Why? Because if we define h of xt to be equal to t of hx plus 1 minus t of gx, right? So we're then we're done, right? Differentially homotopic. Homotopic. Because if we define H to be like this, then we're done. So we let P as in last theorem and F is a zero form. So zero form being Zero form being exact means it's a constant, okay? Zero form being exact, by definition, it means it's constant. So here we calculate P of DF is equal to H F minus G F equal to H F G. So, if we have df equal to zero, then we have f of h equals to f of g, which means that f of any x is equal to f of p. So it's a constant, right? Elegant. Um, if omega is a k form, if omega is a k form, then we have by our formula, d omega we have that is equal to h star omega minus g star omega because these two are differentiable homotopic and this h star omega is equal to omega minus zero which is equal to omega by the definition of h and h star because h star is defined to be the identity map right so The derivative, right? The tangent vectors thing. If you do some calculation, it turns out, yeah, it's just equal to omega, right? And g is a constant function, so like the derivative thing, it's gonna vanish. So it's all maps to zero vectors, okay? If you go back to and review the definition of those functions, right? Let's say let's just go back to a dual forms. We define it to be like this, right? Define it to be like this. So this, right, is like the derivative thing, but ideally mapped, the derivative is 
itself. Or like something like that. But it turns out to be equal to omega. Okay, do the calculation. And if we have the d omega is zero, if d omega is zero, then this is equal to zero, right? So we have d of p omega equals to omega, which means that, well, this means that omega is exact, right? We have a form that applied the differential operator equal to itself, so it's exact. And here we have proved all the all the theorems we need to prove. And in the book, there's a corollary, well, which is very simple. So the omega is a k form. So if those two, those are the k minus one forms, right? If they're equal, then they differ by a form that is one less order minus one, order with one less with them. So if we're doing back to the language of one form, so if f and f0 are two zero forms on A such that they're differential equal to each other, then they differ by a constant. So same even more elementary sense, which means that if two functions have equal derivatives, then they differ by a constant. Right? This is just a special case of the special case of this theorem. And this theorem is also a corollary of this lemma, this genius French person. So the proof is really easy because these two are equal to zero because D is linear, right? So if this is equal to zero, then we are on a star convex set, so it is exact, right? It's exact. So there is some D theta equal to this. So we're done. Similarly for this one. And we just finished all our... Uh, materials on differentiable operators and this uh, lecture is kind of like a little extra so it just discuss when does this becomes true okay